So the UCAT is a little bastard of a test and actually I ended up taking it twice. The first year flopping and the second year changing my strategy and slapping it getting in the top 5%. What are you telling me? My name is Marius and I'm now going into my third year of graduate medicine at Southampton University. In this video I'm going to teach you, I'm going to tell you rather how I managed to slap the UK cat of course the second time round. Obviously we know the first time round I flopped and had to take another gap year. Nevertheless this video is going to be split into four different sections so feel free to uh, skip around if, if uh, you know you're sick of the sound of my voice already. So the first section, what the hell is the UCAT? Well the UCAT is an aptitude test that many uh, UK medical schools use to standardise uh, their applicants and to make sure their applicants in theory have what it takes to um, withstand the pressures of a medical degree or that's the theory at least and many graduate courses ask their applicants to take the UCAT and achieve over a certain score so that you, they will even invite you to, to an interview basically. So the UCAT is supposed to assess your clinical aptitude and, and predict whether you'll be able to deal intellectually with the course uh, and the problems that medicine provides. Um, there's five sections to the test, quantitative reasoning, abstract reasoning, decision making, verbal reasoning and the situational judgment test. I'm not going to go through how to do all those different uh, individual sub-tests uh, in this particular video. Um, the intention of this video is to show how I prepared the second year round because that I think was what really made the difference to my score. Going from 650 average to 740 um, in the first year getting zero interviews and in the second year getting four interviews off the back of it. So how did I actually prepare for the UCAT? Well the first thing I did was I booked my test and once the test was in the diary um, about four months before that, that date I got a Medify subscription. You can get like a four to six month subscription or something for like 60 quid or something like that. Um, that is definitely worth doing and I'll talk about why in a minute. The next thing I did about you know two weeks before the test I started doing the Medify mock test. So Medify have full practice tests that you can basically do in a timed uh, environment and they pretty much simulate exactly how the test is going to be so you can get used to concentrating for that length of time and doing it under the full test conditions. Another good resource is the official mock tests on the UCAT website. If you go onto the UCAT website and scroll down then they have question banks um, and they also have like yeah four different practice tests that you can do so I definitely recommend doing those because those are very useful as well. That's basically the rough timeline of what I did. I got a Medify subscription four months before uh, and then two weeks before the test I started doing you know all the past papers on the Medify website and then all the past papers also on the um, official, official uh, UCAT website as well. So how did I actually use Medify? I've been banging on about it for the start of this video. How did I actually use it? I have five tips for you for this section. And tip number one is don't bother with the tutorial videos, I don't think. So they say that they've got like 47 hours of tutorial videos on the website. Personally, I didn't watch a single one of them. Um, I believe that you get to know the, the types of questions they like to ask the structure of the different questions by actually doing the questions themselves. Um, I think you're kind of wasting your time if you're going to watch 47 hours of tutorial videos, you know what I'm trying to say. But that said, if you're really stuck and you really can't work out how to do a certain type of question, then maybe you watch some, I don't know. Personally, I wouldn't. So tip number two is start banging out timed questions early. So from the get-go, from a few months uh, before your test when you get your Medify subscription, use the feature on Medify that allows you to time uh, to do your questions under timed conditions. 
this is what I did and this is what I did, you know, four months before my test, I was doing questions under time conditions. That's gonna get you used to how long you have for each question and start building your intuition so that your sort of internal clock is saying, right, you need to move on to the next question now when you're in the exam itself. Tip number three is do two hours of revision each morning. This is basically there or thereabouts what I did for that four months in the run up to my exam. Obviously that might be a bit excessive, but the key message that I'm trying to communicate is to start early a few months in advance and do a little bit each day, okay? So you start getting better over time uh, and you allow, you allow your brain to kind of adjust to the types of questions uh, and get better over time. I'm a big believer in the fact that you can get better at everything over time if you just do it consistently and I think this is no different. So which topic should you revise? Well, I basically did, did kind of a balance of, of all of them. On a given day I'd wake up and think, oh, what do I feel like doing? What haven't I done for a while? And just do that basically. I tried to do a lot of verbal reasoning because I was dead at that. Um, and I ended up doing a lot of kind of abstract reasoning because I, I enjoyed that doing that one the most. Don't neglect the SJT. So Medify is quite a good feature where each question on the SJT um, has an explanation. There's a little bit of blurb explaining, you know, why in that ethical scenario you should do that certain thing, and that's very useful. And personally, I kept uh, a track of the ones that I got wrong and the explanations for why yeah, the answer was, was the other one. Um, and that allows you to improve over time. Tip number four is do abstract reasoning in your chill time. So I recommend deleting your social media accounts for just a couple months in the run up to all your exam. Um, and instead when you're chilling with your family, when you're chilling with your friends and they're all on uh, Instagram scrolling mindlessly, you're on your Medify uh, account and just banging out little abstract reasoning problems. You know what I'm trying to say? Because I think abstract reasoning gives you that little, those little hips of dopamine that obviously our modern brains need to, to relax. Um, and actually abstract reasoning I think is the one that you can improve the most um, in preparation for the test. That's the one where I went from like 600 in my first year to 860 in the second year so that's right near the top. The reason I think I did so well the second time round was because I was doing this and, and just banging out little bits of abstract reasoning when I was just chilling. So tip number five is use the concept of overload in your um, UCAT preparation training. And the overload is basically just overdoing it, um, just doing more in your preparation than you need for the exam. Um, and it's a fitness term and I'm using it a tiny bit wrong here, but basically what I mean to say is that, for example, if you have, let's say, 29 decision-making questions to do in 31 minutes, uh, you know, do 60 decision-making questions in, in however long it takes. Medify will set the time for you. You just can choose the number of questions. The kind of basic idea behind this is that if you train harder than the actual test itself, then when you go into the test, it's gonna feel like light work. You know what I'm trying to say? Light work. Moving on to the next section, exam day tips. Well, I have three tips for you based on uh, my two experiences with the UK cap. Tip number one is use the numpad. Okay, so on the keyboard, the numpad is that thing on the right with the numbers, basically. Um, in my first year taking the UCAT, I manually was clicking, um, you can get an online calculator, and I was manually clicking with the mouse uh, in the when I needed to work out some kind of sum. Obviously, under the exam pressure, I couldn't do 10 plus 15, had to type that into the calculator. So I was, you know, using the mouse to manually click the numbers on the screen and that wasted, uh, you know, so much time. So yeah, don't do that basically and use the numpad on the right hand side, that makes it much quicker. Um, 
Tip number two for the exam is count in twos. This saves a lot of time, I think, uh, in the abstract reasoning section. And you wanna try and save as much time as possible, work out ways to be efficient in, in these problems. And, and counting in twos uh, is, is one of those things that really helped me. Let's say it's one of those problems where you have like, I don't know, odd numbers of dots on the left and even numbers of chickens on the right or something like that. Um, if there was like nine dots on, on the left, then you just go quick two, four, six, eight, nine, boom. Um, two, four, five, etc. Tip number three is keep a cool head. As I've alluded to in my other videos, big posture that helps with reducing the amount of cortisol in the system and increasing the amount of testosterone and that's gonna help you feel a bit more confident. The next thing that is gonna help you to keep a cool head is to try to use strategies that will keep your, your mind focused in the present. So the one that I like to do is focusing on my breath, so not trying to control it, but just observing it going in and out. This is one that I use in my, my other career, obviously as a semi-professional rugby player, but it's one that served me very well in, in times of, of high pressure and stress in interviews and in doing exams. So focus on your breath, um, keep your mind focused in the present. What will be will be, you've prepared well, you've done your four months prep, um, so it's all gonna be gravy. So that is basically how I prepared for the UCAT the second time round. As I said, the first year I didn't do any preparation um, and, and didn't get a very good score and then got no even offers for interviews. Um, and the second year I did a lot of preparation in the ways that I've just outlined um, and got four interviews straight away. I hope that was reasonably useful and good luck for your UCAT if you're taking it this year.